Hello guys and welcome back to the Babylonians channel. Today we're going to talk about Gains Network. They are a decentralized trading platform that allows you to do leverage on uh, crypto stocks and uh, forex and they are often compared uh, to the big boys like uh, DYDX, GMX. So a lot of people are betting that GNS might uh, eventually reach the status of uh, GMX or DYDX currently or even potentially uh, overtake them. So if you look at Gains Network, their all-time volume uh, has already reached uh, 15 billion. So they have already flipped GMX total volume on the AVAX chain and uh, they are actually growing very, very fast. So today we're going to look at uh, how does uh, this uh, Gains Network work? What is this uh, GNS token about? And also talk a little bit about sticking statistics, uh, some numbers. So the token for Gains Network is GNS and it has gone up by almost uh, 400% over the past few months. And right now it's uh, going through a correction. So to start off, I've already uh, charted the overview diagram of how Gains Network works. So the TLDR is their synthetic leverage trading index and they have a very efficient liquidity. There's uh, no order book, no LP and uh, traders are just uh, trading against the DAI vault. So whenever a traders want to open a position, uh, they just deposit DAI as collateral and they can uh, open any leverage trade. So the minimum size is 1,500. So if you put 150, uh, then you must go at least 10x leverage uh, to hit 1,005. So you can trade on crypto, forex, stocks, and you can do like up to 100x, 1,000x leverage. So this is really a haven for those DGENs. And it's important to note that uh, you are actually not trading any underlying asset. You don't hold anything. You are just trading uh, the price action of something. And this price is actually comes from their own uh, custom chain link decentralized Oracle network. Uh, they call it Dawn. And they have eight on-demand oracles. And each of them actually takes in the median price from seven exchange APIs. So whenever somebody do some kind of uh, open close or some kind of a uh, trade, this aggregator contract will actually take the price from all these uh, eight uh, on-demand oracles which actually takes the median price uh, from seven uh, API exchange. So if there's a price difference of more than 1.5%, then it will reject and wait for the next answer. So in short, this aggregator contract is actually uh, taking the average of the average and they have uh, this price fit to actually uh, filter outliers. So you can see over here, uh, these are the different uh, exchange price and you can see this is gains is actually a very clean chart because uh, they actually filter out uh, all these uh, outliers so it's very important especially if you're on a very high leverage uh, you can see that if you are trading on any of this uh, centralized exchange you have been liquidated and even a one two percent move uh, can affect uh, liquidations or your bottom line pnl so because they have a very uh, efficient uh, chain link model they are able to offer very uh, high leverage and also number four, they have very competitive fees, minimal, no slippage, no scam weeks, and they have uh, white offerings. So you can see this is uh, how the UI UX of the platform looks like. I can see that uh, there are over 70 pairs you can go long, go short, uh, go 50x, 100x leverage on. And it's actually very easy to uh, open a position. You just have to uh, deposit your die and choose uh, whether you want long, short, and how much leverage you want. So here is the breakdown of the fee structure. And your collateral will be liquidated once your uh, profit and loss hit 90%. And the rest buffer is actually for the bots to execute uh, this liquidation process. So for example, if a trader put in $150 uh, with 10x leverage, then the maximum loss that he will suffer is actually his $150 uh, collateral. And by the way, uh, this uh, trader, I put uh, this image, the leverage done by uh, DJ and Alfie. You can check out his heart. I think it's uh, quite cool. So all these fees that the traders pay when uh, doing all these transactions will accrue back uh, to the stakeholders over here. So there are four main uh, key stakeholders in this uh, whole ecosystem. One is the die vault, uh, second is the liquidity pool, uh, third is uh, GNS taking, and fourth is the referrals and the uh, NFT bots. So the die vault is the most important key uh, in this uh, whole puzzle. Once this thing breaks, then uh, the whole thing actually uh, collapses because the die vault is actually acting as a counterparty uh, to the traders. So anybody can stake their die uh, over here and they will actually receive a uh, 15% uh, of the trading fees uh, from here and this is based on the weighted average uh, based on these assumptions because market orders and limit orders have actually uh, different rates and this is based on the latest uh, v6.2 changes so if you stake die you get 15% uh, of the trading fees but the risk is you are acting as a counterparties to the traders so what does this mean whenever a trader open a position uh, and trade uh, all this uh, synthetic leverage the losses will actually come into the die vault and if they are winning, then we have to pay them uh, the profits uh, from the die vault. So right now, the biggest question uh, everyone might be thinking, uh, this might be a very uh, huge risk, right? Because what if the trader's winnings is more than what is available uh, in the die vault balance? Then uh, this whole model would not work anymore, right? But statistically, traders always lose and the house always win. And you can see that CoinData School actually uh, did a sampling 
uh, simulation over here. So this is based on 1,000 uh, simulations and 100,000 simulations. So you can see only 3 or 4 people are making money. The rest are actually losing. And if you account for borrow and liquidation fees, the chance for traders to make money collectively uh, is close to zero. And again, if you look at uh, Gains Network historically, uh, you can see that the cumulative net PNL of the traders is also uh, losing in general, except uh, over here when uh, the Luna crash, there actually a lot of people shorting and actually people making money. And if you look at uh, GMX uh, analytics, this is on Arbitrum, you can see that the traders net PNL is also uh, always losing. And if we switch to the AVEX chain, you can also see uh, that the traders net PNL is also uh, decreasing. So on average, uh, traders always lose and all these losses are actually uh, deposited into the vaults uh, over here. So the vault TVL is just the total stake die value, how many people stake their die here, uh, plus the platform PNL. And that's why you see over here the die vault balance and TVL in die uh, is generally uh, always uh, increasing because of the cumulative net losses uh, from the traders. So all these losses will go back to this uh, die vault. So then the next question is uh, how to stay over collateralized. And this is a very, very important question uh, to keep asking and testing because once this thing is under collateralized, then it puts the uh, die stickers at risk of a bank run. So here are some mechanisms uh, that they adopt. So one is stickers can only withdraw max 25%. Uh, every 24 hours so this is to reduce uh, the withdrawal rate in case of like extreme volatility or something and two is if there's 130 percent excess the die would actually buy and burn uh, gns to reduce uh, inflation emissions so this feature is very powerful because it could potentially make gns deflationary so imagine a situation where uh, traders are uh, keep losing 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 and this uh, die vault uh, tvl keeps increasing increasing and once it's more than 130 uh, percent all this excess will be used uh, to burn uh, gns supply and increasing the price assuming all things equal and also there's a max profits for traders to be made uh, is 900 percent so if like luna crash from a hundred dollars to zero dollars uh, their maximum profit is only 900 percent and then next is the die fees for referrals bots plus gns die lp actually goes back to the die vault so you can see over here that uh, the gns die liquidity they actually get 7.5 percent of the trading fees and also uh, referrals plus NFT bots, they actually get 45%. So all these fees from uh, LP and referrals and NFT bots actually don't go to them. They actually go to this die vault. And these parties are actually paid uh, in GNS emissions uh, in replacement for the die rewards that they are receiving. So this die vault will actually uh, earn more die uh, from all these uh, trading fees. And this helps the die vault to stay uh, over collateralized. And also there are funding fees between the longs and shorts. And the purpose of doing this is to balance out the net exposure. So there's no skill imbalance in the event uh, where the traders are right. So this is to protect uh, the die stickers. And also there will be rollover fees on the collateral uh, to die vault. So this is for those who are actually going leverage with very uh, high collateral amount but with very low leverage. And they will be charged uh, rollover fees every block and all these fees will go back to the die vault. So all these mechanisms will uh, help die vault to stay uh, over collateralized in addition to betting that uh, traders on general uh, over the long term uh, lose more than they win so the second option here is you can provide a gns die lp and you get uh, 7.5 percent which is paid in gns emissions plus the trading swap fees uh, from quick swap and then uh, third is uh, gns staking so this actually just launched the single sided staking and uh, you are actually earning 32.5 percent uh, of the trading fees and this is actually very attractive and it's quite comparable to gmx uh, 30 percent and finally last is referrals plus uh, nft bots and some of the benefits include uh, reduced spread fees when doing uh, on their trading platform and also you can run bots to execute liquidations and all these uh, limit orders and by owning this NFT, you can also boost your LP use or boost your uh, GNS staking use. So this is a simple model that I have done up to show uh, what is the monthly revenue you could potentially earn if you stake uh, 1000 GNS. So right now V6.2, the latest are released. These are the fee breakdown structure for open trade, close trade, uh, market order, limit order. So you can see that uh, both market and limit actually have a different fee structure. And so these are the assumptions. So this is on average 70% is actually going through market order and 30% is actually going through uh, limit order. So all these figures are actually uh, taken from uh, SEP, which is the lead dev 
of uh, gains network and you can see this is the weighted average fees uh, breakdown for GNS taking uh, Divot, GNS, DILP and Referral Plus Spots so these are the four that you can see uh, over here that would actually uh, accrue value from the platform fees of these uh, traders so if we change all these assumptions let's say 50% uh, to 50% then uh, the weighted average fees will also change but right now uh, is 70% uh, 30% so GNS taker will get 32.5% uh, so right now the current daily volume is about uh, 30 million uh, based on the Dune analytics uh, over here for the past few days so then we can project the future revenue uh, based on uh, 3 months later, 6 months later, 12 months later uh, based on the month on month growth rate so this growth rate is actually uh, based on this uh, reference over here from Dune Analytics so here you can see uh, the volume so I actually take the 7 day moving average uh, growth percentage change and this date range is actually from 1st Jan 2022 so you can see that the average monthly growth is about 17% so if we use 17% uh, here uh, let's be conservative let's just put 15% uh, so 6 months later the future daily volume will be around uh, 70 million and this is just uh, present value times 1 plus the growth rate to the power of uh, the month over here so the next thing is to calculate uh, how much of the total volume is actually uh, crypto trading because again uh, they are actually trading uh, both uh, forex stocks and actually crypto and this fees is actually uh, based only on crypto so based on the historical uh, volume trading crypto actually accounts for about 87% and uh, so we just assume 85% uh, uh, of uh, crypto percent volume and the fees earned would just be uh, this times the crypto percentage times 0.08% uh, and because the volume actually here it accounts for both uh, open and closed trades so that's why we just take 0.08% uh, so this is how much gains network will earn uh, in daily fees if we have uh, 70 million uh, daily volume and the revenue distribution to GNS stakers would just be uh, the weighted average over here times the fees earned so let's just focus on GNS taking here uh, so average they will earn about 15,000 and this is uh, currently uh, how many GNS is staked so this is an assumption uh, you can adjust uh, based on how much you think it will be staked in the future and this is how much money revenue you can earn for staking 1,000 GNS and this is assuming uh, six months later at 15% growth rate but they are also planning to launch on uh, Arbitrum chain and also what is interesting is this uh, Forex is actually a trillion dollar volume and right now in crypto I don't think there are any decks that is uh, very active uh, trading Forex and if they are actually capturing this uh, Forex volume market share very efficiently then I think this uh, whole thing would really blow up because uh, right now we are only accounting revenue uh, from the crypto segment so let's say if the month on month growth rate uh, if they are bullish and they launch a lot of features catalysts let's just put uh, 30% and assuming months later let's say this is like uh, 12 months later then this is the monthly revenue you could earn so you can uh, play around with all, all these assumptions and I will share this uh, sheet uh, on my notion page later so finally I have also done some uh, fundamentals comparison uh, between GMX so this is the 24 hour volume 30 day uh, revenue 30 day protocol revenue so this is uh, taken from uh, token terminal so there are few metrics that we want to measure which is uh, over here uh, capital efficiency return on asset price to sale net profit take rate and uh, ROE ROE is just uh, the TVL over market cap times capital efficiency percent times the net profit times take rate so this formula over here is actually uh, in this video that I have done at uh, the beginning of this year so this is uh, based on a chat with uh, Folius Venture so if you want to understand more about the metrics and the meaning uh, behind this uh, formula and how to calculate ROE then I uh, definitely recommend to check this video but if not uh, this is the ROE for uh, GNS and GMX and you can see that uh, the ROE for uh, GMX is actually uh, higher and the total users right now GMX is definitely uh, dominating uh, they have like almost 80,000 whereas uh, GNS only has about 5,000 uh, users and finally I look at the cumulative net PNL for GNS and GMX and this is quite important because you are essentially betting uh, against the traders that they lose and because their losses will translate to profits for you and you can see that uh, GNS are actually better traders as compared to GMX so this is the average daily net profit by average daily volume and how this is calculated is actually taking the cumulative net PNL divided by uh, the total number of days since inception uh, divided by the total volume divided by 
total days. But the results are definitely not conclusive because uh, this uh, GNS uh, better performance is based on the shorts positions during the Terra collapse. So if you look at the APR comparison, GMX is paying about uh, 30%, GNS is 32.5%, it's quite similar, and both of them are real use. And GMX actually has an uh, extra 15% uh, uh, escrow GMX. So I've done a GMX GLP video if you uh, don't understand uh, what I'm uh, talking about, uh, because this is comparing between uh, GNS and GMX. And GMX max supply is 30 million, right now there's about 60% circulating. GNS supply cap is 100 million and right now there's about uh, 30 million and about 17 million stake and right now inflation is about 7.5% uh, based on this uh, GNS emission rewards that we see uh, over here that will be paid to the LP and referral and N NFT bots so it's unlikely that GNS will actually reach the supply cap this is just a theoretical uh, limit because it will be based on the inflation and burn rate uh, mechanism and this burn rate is based on whether uh, the dive vault is actually over collateralized which is based on whether traders are losing so finally how do you buy this uh, gns token it's very simple you just go over to quick swap and because they are right now on the polygon chain so you just bridge over your if uh, from exchange or from anywhere using like hot protocol uh, to the polygon network then change your e for whatever to die and then you can just buy a gns directly on the quick swap so once you get your gns token just come over to the sticking tab uh, on their website and just uh, stick uh, it's just a one two click button and you uh, automatically stick your gns over here already so this is a uh, uh, example for this video and if you want to stake your die uh, just go to quick swap or any uh, dex uh, exchange you want and uh, get some die once you have some die come over here stake die and you will get uh, this uh, apy so right now the gns uh, is about 6.7 percent apr and this is paid in real use based on the trading fees of the traders and right now the die vault is paying about 11 uh, percent apr again uh, this is uh, real use uh, based on the trading fees so that's it for this video and if you want access to this uh, spreadsheet model and also this uh, diagram uh, you can come over to my notion page over here uh, this personal excel analysis and personal sketcher so this is where i would document and compile uh, all my works that i've done in the past and once again thanks for watching this video if you find this video helpful i would appreciate if you can like subscribe share and i'll see you in the next one bye